Hey guys, Madeline Rosine here at the Ipsy Studio in Los Angeles. I'm here with Levon. Hello, everybody. She's an amazing makeup artist Thank and friend, you. and she just did my makeup, and now I look like a human being, and it looks amazing. And we're gonna talk about her career and what it's like to be a makeup artist in Los Angeles and what she's got going on. Absolutely, let's get started. Check it out. All right, so. What are we gonna do? I think, let me see your skin. Your skin looks good. You have stuff on right now? A little a bit. A little bit. Mm -hmm. Should I take it off? Couldn't come in here without nothing on. Oh my you? God, because Josh wanted to take my picture. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're going to take it off. Okay. <laughs> Let's use a makeup wipe. Boop. Okay, everybody ready to see this horror? There's nothing horrible about you, baby. <laughs> Okay, happy life. Perfect. Happy life, happy wife. All right, so, so great to be here. So great to have you. So excited. Yes. Very exciting to be here at Ipsy. Um, just gonna prep your skin a little bit and then cool. we're just gonna do a little, we're gonna do a get ready with me, but I'm gonna get ready with you, but I'm gonna do your makeup. Basically, yeah, that's what's happening. That's what's happening, right? Um, and I'm also gonna be asking Levon a bunch of questions um, about her life as a makeup artist in this crazy town of Los Angeles. Crazy it is. Yeah, indeed. Um, so first, I wanna know what the best part about being a makeup artist is. Um, I go to work every day and it's something new, it's something different, it's so much fun, mm -hmm. and I always get to um, do something that I love. So there's a famous quote, you know, find something you love to do and you never work a day in your life, and that's pretty much what I do. I absolutely love being a makeup artist. I know a lot of people might hate their jobs or can't stand the people that they have to work with, but for me it's just like every day's Fun. I mean, there's challenges, but it's usually really, really great. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's so much creativity involved. Yeah, for sure. And the deepest yearning of the human soul is to create, is what Absolutely. I've been told. Yes, I agree. By another famous quote. <laughs> I love it. Um, that's awesome. Great answer. Um, weirdest thing in your makeup bag? Um, weirdest thing in my makeup bag is going to be my mascara shield. I see what is a, that? I see a lot of people have them now, but when I first got it, people were like, oh my gosh, what is that tool? And it's this thing here, and I use it, like look down. I use it to hold up the eye when I put on mascara. Saw it in another fellow makeup artist kit. I so, oh, love this oil. So what I just put on you is a little bit of Beneath Your Mask. It's a Nourish Skin and Hair Serum. It is um, all natural, all organic, and a friend of mine created this, and she has a whole line of products. It's pretty amazing. Oh, that's awesome. Smells good. Shout out to Levon's friend. Mm-hmm, beneath your mask. So I put that on as like a little base because we're gonna give you a little bit of glowy, dewy skin, and then I'm going to an old makeup artist kit essential, which is Embryolisse. Le crème concentrate. Oh my goodness. Working on my French accent. La crème concentrée. Mm hmm. Bien sûr. Oh, oui, parlez-vous français? Oui, un peu. Ah, un peu. Moi aussi. Um, okay, next question. Mm -hmm. What is one thing in your makeup bag that you could, you would basically die without having? Um, die without having would be my lash curler. Okay. Definitely You're into these lash lashes curl. then. Yeah, lashes are a thing. Lashes are everything. Lashes are a thing. That's so funny you said that because it's definitely true. Lashes are definitely a thing for me. Yeah. Very much well, you so. Know, I, speaking of quotes, if we're just going to go on quotes, let's just go on all out. I saw a meme yesterday and it was like, ah, oh, my lashes are too long. Said no one ever. <laughs> uh, humor. So, so true. The one thing is, is like when it comes to lashes, I'm all into the lash, mm -hmm. the strip lash and individuals, but not the long-term individuals. Those exist? Yeah. You know, oh, you, you know, like people go, go get, get their, their lashes, lashes done. done. Yes. And miss important meetings because they're going to get yes. their lashes done. And Those I'm not a fan of. And flake on events and flake on hanging out yeah. with me because they're going to get their lashes, lashes done. done. 
This has happened to me. So the thing is about them, I tried them once and I had a guy do them who is phenomenal at them. Francisco in New York, he's fantastic. Um, but I was so picky about where they were going and the direction they were going, it drove me nuts and then you have to maintain it. So I was like, I just pop on a strip. Word. But my friend, uh, Mari Shten, she just created these individual uh, cluster lashes and they're the best ones I've ever seen. Like you put them on the lash and they literally look like they're growing out of the follicle. Oh my God. Those are amazing. Sign me up for Shout that. out to Mari Shten. I actually have some here. Those look so real. These are the Mariel 12s. Okay, it's gonna be hard to see this, but. I'll take the plastic off. They look And really maybe we'll real. use some of these on you too. Okay. And if you really, one of the things I like to do is a custom lash. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I might use a strip mm -hmm. and then I'll cut it up or I'll use half a strip and then add individuals so that the lash looks more natural. Amazing. That's just one of my secrets. And then of course we just put some Glossier, rosebomb.com on your lips. It feels pretty bomb. Yeah, it is bomb. Favorite celebrity that you've worked with? Carrie Washington. Oh. And that was like 10 years ago. Wow. But she was the sweetest. She has a little shih tzu named Josephine Baker. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. And while she went to her event, I asked her what she was going to do with her dog. She's like, she's just going to stay in the hotel room and concierge will walk her. I'm like, do you want me to dog sit? And she's like, you will? And I was like, yeah. So I took her dog home with me to let it play with. I had two little chihuahuas at the time, and they had a little play date. And then after event, she pulled up to my house in her limousine and came and got her dog. Stop it. That is a dream. I love that. She's the sweetest. She was really, really nice. She sounds dope. So, on to the eyes. I always do eyes first just because I like um, to be able to catch anything that falls and clean everything up. But we're gonna do something nice. I love what you're wearing, you're all white. So I think Thanks. I'm gonna do a little monochromatic on you. Cool. Let me grab my, this is new, I just got this. This is a Morphe Eyelid Primer, which I'm a huge fan of because you, the eyeshadow ain't moving. You can use this all over your lid and close your eye. So if you weren't a makeup artist, <laughs> what would you do? I would own a 24 hour childcare chain called Around the Clock. Wow. Before, you like kids enough to do that? Yes. Before I was a makeup artist, I was going to college for early childhood education, oh. and I was supposed to graduate soon and transfer to Cal State Fullerton, and I ended up at the MTV Music Awards as a talent escort. One thing led to another. I dropped out of college and enrolled in makeup school, and that was 20 years ago. Wow. Yes. Oh my gosh. Big life change. Big life change. So yeah, that's where I'd be. I would definitely be a makeup artist. I mean, a... <laughs> I would definitely be a uh, franchise owner of a 24-hour childcare chain. That's awesome. So I still dab a little bit with kids because at that time I was known as the potty training queen. Wow. So I am creating an online course on how to potty train your child in 48 hours. Unbelievable. It's my next agenda. So this right here is that new new. I absolutely love this stuff. It's by Giorgio Armani. Mm. And it is these new eye tint. Eye tint? This is our eye tint. Oh it's number God. 23. It and it's like a cream it's shadow. Like a lip gloss, it looks not. like a lip gloss, but it's an eye tint. And when I put it on the eyes as a base, kind of like that monochromatic, soft, neutral brown eye, it looks really, really good. So I'm going to go in and just blur this out a little bit more. Let's talk about favorite products in general. Okay. Like if someone put a gun to your head and mm -hmm. said, you can only use this brand for the rest of your life. Ooh. This what brand for the rest of my life. Can I break it down into categories? <laughs> oh, that's cheating, <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> um, no, it would be Makeup Forever. Wow, okay. Makeup Forever has everything. It literally would be Makeup Forever. It would be Makeup Forever. They have everything. And I, they've, I've been loyal to that brand since day one. That's what I learned to do makeup with in makeup school. Got it. I went to Donna Mee's Academy. She now does online courses, but Donna brought Makeup Forever to the U.S. Mm. And that's what she trained us on. Wow. And so I've been loyal to that brand for years. Skincare wise, it'd be Shu Uemura. Oh. Japanese brand. I've been okay. using their cleansing oil for years. Although there are other products available in the world, that is one thing that has not changed in 20 years is uh, my use of their cleansing oil every day. That's amazing. 
the eyes are looking good. I'm like in this little brown taupey situation we got. Yes. Um, next, I'm gonna curl your lashes and put on some mascara, and then we're gonna do a little lash situation. This is my favorite new eyelash curler. Shu Uramura had the best eyelash curler in the world. Wow. After he passed away, his son took over the business and he came out with this lash color. It's called the Yutowa. But as far as I know, in Los Angeles, you can only get it at Violet Gray, which is my favorite makeup boutique. Where is that? It's on Melrose Place. I call it Luxury Makeup Avenue. Wait a minute. Glossy I think I've there. been there. Yeah. I've been there. It's, you walk it's in, it's like hidden, a little though. studio. Yes. 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 It's in a little, little alcove of little bungalows. It's amazing. That's amazing, yeah. It's my favorite store. It's great. Even though I don't get a discount there, I just love going in there. I would love for that to be like my own personal Oof. makeup suite. It's yes. stunning. So that I like to go to. But they're the only ones that sell the Utoa Lash Curler. Oops. So come over here, turn this way for me. Look down here and... Oh, we got a flutter lash. Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna count. Are you ready? Uh huh. Any skin in there? Uh. No. Oh my god. Can you feel that? Yes. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, five, four, three, two, one. Gives a perfect curl every time. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even crying that yeah. hard. No, I'm just kidding. Perfect. Well done, darling. Well done. Thank you. Question. Mm hmm. Over the years, mm -hmm. I have had the experience of falling in love with a makeup product and then it gets discontinued. Yes. It's a problem. It is. Because I get very attached to things, mm -hmm. okay? And I'm very particular. For instance, Becca, you know Becca? Mm-hmm. They had this lovely highlighter. It was a cream highlighter and it just, just was perfect for my cheekbones. Uh-huh. I've never found anything that was the equivalent. Okay. It's gone. Where'd it go? I don't I don't know. Another dimension. <laughs> what was it called? Um Do you I don't know, Becca's cream highlighter. I Becca's think. cream highlighter. I just made okay. that up. Um Did they replace it with something else, like a powder formula? Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. And I think that is not okay. Because I liked the cream and it was also in the color champagne, I specifically oh, remember. Champagne pop. Yes, champagne pop. They still have it. But it's not the cream. Not the cream, the powder. So make it a cream. How Take the champagne that? pop and a little bit of your moisturizer oh. or your eye cream and put it on that way. Okay, but that sounds like a lot of work for no, me. No, no, no. You take the champagne pop, you rub your finger in it, you take a little eye cream and you tap it on the temple. Okay, I'm gonna do to it. Go. I swear to God, I'm gonna do it. All right, that. lash guard, look down at the floor for me. Pull this up and then we coat the lashes. So I'm using uh, L'Oreal's Lash Paradise. It's my favorite mascara right now. See, that's another reason I do eyes first. See, I just got mascara on your nose, and I can clean it up. Do you have any makeup artists that you look up to? Yes. Do tell. Mother. Your mom? No, AKA Pat McGrath. Pat McGrath oh, is mother. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> Pat uh. McGrath is mother. So yes, Pat McGrath, um, Val Garland, um, Lisa Eldridge, um, who else? I would have to say Aaron Parsons. Um, also Sir John. I worked with Sir John on Pat McGrath's team and to see how fast he's come up is phenomenal. I know this story too because he didn't reach out to Beyonce. She was following him on Instagram. Whoa. So that I think is amazing. That is amazing. Yeah, so those are probably my top. Yeah, you have a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that you look up to. That's, yeah. that's so important. Though. And it's like, interesting, all of them are all of them were or are represented by Streeters, which is a London-based talent agency. What's your favorite nighttime look? Oh my, a oh, smoky eye. Smoky eye. Smoky eye and a bold lip. Oh. Like black liner, top, bottom, lash, and a bold lip. Absolutely. We're doing that next time. Okay, for sure. Okay. This is my Lux Lash. If anybody knows where I can find another one of these, please let me know. One of my assistants on a film I was keying gave me this and it is great. Let me show you why. These are all my lashes in here and I labeled them with my little label maker. Wow. I usually have my glue and my little tools in here too, but I don't want them to fall out while I hold this up. But yeah, and so what I do is I take the lashes out of the box and I stack them so it's left, right, left, right, left, right, stacked here. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. They look a little intimidating in Yeah, there. because they're stacked. It's like, oh, I don't want that lash, but that's like five pairs of lashes on one on one uh, like, slot. 
So one of the things I do when it comes to lashes is always measure it. There's too many times I see people where the end of the lash is hanging so low and all that does is create your eye to look very downcast. Yuck. And we want the epitome of beauty, which is an almond up tilt eye. Okay. So when I measure it to your lash line, looking at where it starts and where it stops, and you also don't want to go too far in the corner because then you can feel it and that pricking feeling sucks. Yes. We don't want that. So right now, if you look straight in the camera, I can see I need to cut off the last three because it's hanging down too far. If you could do anybody's makeup mm. in the world, mm. who would it be and why? Um, it already happened. Oh, wow. Yeah. Who was it? And I didn't even do her makeup. Wait, what? <laughs> It was whoever I could work with. Makeup, oh, okay. I, I couldn't do her makeup. I I, I would have freaked out, but oh, it was okay. Naomi Campbell. Oh, and you worked with her? Yes, I worked with her, her makeup artist okay. as the assistant. Got it. And my task was to put lotion all over her body. What? Head to toe. Oh my God. So I moisturized her body and it was, it was great. So yeah, Naomi Campbell, that was on my bucket list. I remember the day that happened. I was just like freaking out. But nowadays I'd say, one thing I'd like to do, which I'm going to manifest and put out there, I really want to go on tour with an artist. Yes. Possibly me. Possibly. I was okay. just about to say that. Done. I was totally about to say that. If I could ever get this album out, then This one here. I want to go on tour with you. I want us to go okay. all over the U.S. and Europe and, yeah. Okay, you're hired. Uh, open your eye and look down for me. So one thing about lashes also, because you said putting them on yourself, the main trick you want to do is wait for the glue to set a second. Let it get a little tacky, fan it. As a makeup artist, I never blow on the lash because nobody wants my spitty cooties all over your eyeball. I do. And I see it happen all the time. I see people do it and I'm like, uh, gross. Yeah. Now what you think about it? Yeah, it's If you ever gross. see a makeup artist yeah. blow on your face, a brush or a lash, be like, thanks so much for coming. Bye-bye. Yeah, well, it's the same way I feel about like birthday cake. <laughs> like people like blowing on their birthday cakes is like thanks. That's true. That's kind of gross. Yeah. Yeah. So look down for me. Open your eyes and look at the floor. And then I'm just gonna pop it right in the middle first. And then in the corner. There we go. And open. Oh hi. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. Aren't you cute? What's your least favorite part about being a makeup artist? Oh, comparing myself to other people. Yeah. That's one of the biggest challenges I've had, and I'm really trying to get over it, to be honest. Um, the industry's changed so much in the past few years, and I saw it shifting um, about four years ago before I decided to move back to L.A. because I was in New York. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing, is seeing the shift between makeup artists getting the attention to influencers and beauty content creators getting the attention. So for me, that's just been a challenge is trying to figure out how I fit into all that. Um, the other challenge of being a makeup artist is getting paid. Gotta get paid. Gotta get paid. And the thing I think needs to change is for freelancers. I know there's a freelancer union, like you have to get paid within 30 days, but it there's stipulations as to when it gets to this person to that person. Mm -hmm. I think that you already know your budget. Mm -hmm. You know how much you're planning on paying me. Give me my money when the makeup's done. Bitch better have my money, you know? Okay. Do you ever go out and like look at people's makeup? All the time. I am judging, I am correcting, <laughs> I am envisioning you with a new face all the time. With something that you would do on them to just make it Absolutely. Different. Yeah. I see it all the time. Um, so what's your biggest pet peeve that you see like people doing wrong? Um, cake face. Cake face. Yeah. What's I that? think I think the trend right now is this whole Instagram kind of took over and the reason being is we see a large influx of men becoming makeup artists. Oh. And a lot of men who uh, perform drag mm -hmm. are becoming makeup artists, which is totally cool, but what you do on a man to make yourself look like a woman is not necessary to do on a woman who's already a woman. Right. So we're seeing this trend of really like carved out faces and carved out brows and mm -hmm. cut creases and mm -hmm. highlight on the tip of the nose. And I'm like, that's not beauty. Right. That's not enhancing what a woman looks like. Yeah. So I feel like that, 
that I'd like to see phase out, which I think we're going to start to see skin more. We're going to start to see gloss making a comeback. But right now, I think cake face needs to go. Got it. Well, that's funny because the next thing I was going to ask you about was what do you think are the current, you know, most common makeup trends right now? Um, common makeup trends, I think we're seeing a return of like a bold color on the eyelid, which I love. Mm -hmm. Like really bold colors. Glitter and sequins and like little um, uh, crystals are coming oh, back. Oh yeah, I saw that at a party the yeah. other day. Like people were But like, remember yeah. how back in like Gwen Stefani days you had them here? Yeah. <laughs> you always walked around like two little rhinestones yeah, there? Yeah, That's exactly. making a yeah. comeback. But like strategically placed in more of an editorial kind of way. Mm -hmm. So you have a beauty product that you're developing. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about it? I can tell you a little bit about it, okay. but I can't tell you a lot about it. Still working on that patent, but it is a makeup tool that is going to revolutionize beauty. Wow. It's been attempted before, but not at the level that it needs to be. So I'm very excited. That's amazing. Yes. And what is that that you're wearing? Oh, this is my little lash glue cup. <laughs> Look at so that. When I, it's it like looks a like a little, little ring. ring. Yeah. It's so cool. So when I do individual lashes, I put the glue in the little cup, and then I take my tweezers, and then I take the lash out of the case. What I do is I put all my little lashes here on my hand. You can see them there. And then I'll dip it in the glue and put it back on my hand so that then it has a moment to like get tacky. So when I place it on the lash, it's good to go. So where do you find makeup inspiration? Definitely Instagram, mm -hmm. but I also love Pinterest. Mm. I've been an avid user of Pinterest for years now, mm -hmm. and I find that there's so much uh, good content there. I also love museums. Mm. Um, especially because I like I like the use of color a lot, mm -hmm. so I use a lot of color, and so that I like to go to for inspiration as well. That's awesome. Next, now that we got our lashes on, I'm gonna go in with this Stila waterproof liner, which I love. Go ahead and open your eye for me and look down and out to that floor there. There you go. Perfect. I thought of another product. Look that that got discontinued. Mm-hmm. That I cried about. Open and look down and look. You know Guerlain? Guerlain, yes. Do you like them? Yes. Me too. A lot. In fact, their coal eyeliner. Mm-hmm. Best. I used to use it every day. Discontinued. Discontinued. I don't know. It's like part of me just wants to like know. write to them. Mm-hmm. And be like, what were you thinking? You ruined my life. <laughs> there is a, um, have you ever heard of Makeup Alley? Is this the place where they like recreate? No, no, they don't recreate. Makeup artists will go on there and they'll post and they'll have products that may have been discontinued that they have. Oh, that's amazing. That are still like eligible to be used. Wow. But if you really like a nice coal pencil, mm -hmm. the new Armani Waterproof Smooth Silk Eye Pencil. It's good? Is bomb. Really? Bomb.com. Stays put, it's waterproof, and it's jet black. Another one I really love is Marc Jacobs. Eyeliners are really great too. I always sharpen my pencils and I mm -hmm. spray it with a little bit of alcohol. Smart. No cooties. No cooties. Cootie free. Absolutely. So go ahead and open your eye and look down and out to the corner. I'm just going to fill in the lash line underneath. And that makes your lash line look very full with no gaps. And look down here. How old were you when you started wearing makeup? Um, I was allowed to when I was 16, but I started when I was 13 and I got caught. You were sneaking it? Yeah, at school. Oh I wore my, my friend's wet and wild lip gloss and my mom came to school one day randomly the day of the turkey trot dance <laughs> and saw me with silver shimmer lips and she's like, you're grounded, let's go home and I miss the turkey trot dance. Oh my God, that's this, I bet you didn't miss much. No, I mean, probably not. From what it sounds like. First of all, I don't dance, so uh, I don't know. But wow, silver lip gloss? Oh yeah, it was horrible. It wasn't even my shade. Wet and wild? Yeah, looked atrocious. So you said 
You were going to be in child development. Yes. Right? But then you got into entertainment. Yeah. What was the exact breaking point when you knew, like, oh, I want to do makeup? Um, I was at the MTV Music Awards. Um, my friend was going to makeup school. Donna Me, the owner of the school that she was going to, the one I eventually went to, had gotten the students an opportunity to be talent escorts. Oh my gosh. And my friend got assigned the Beastie Boys, and she was able to get me a credential, and I got Busta Rhymes in the Flip Mode Squad. Oh my God. And so I basically walked them around all day, showing them where they needed to go. And I was a huge fan at the time of Tori Amos. Mm -hmm. And she was in the bathroom line with me and I fangirled on her and she gave me tickets to a concert that weekend, backstage passes and tickets to an after party. And after that I was like, goodbye preschool. I wanna work in the entertainment industry. Right. And that's what I did. Wow. I dropped out of school that Monday and enrolled in Donna's school. That's very bold. Yeah. It's a big decision. Never look back. Good for you. So I know you said you like that Becca Champagne Pop, so I'm right. gonna use the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector Ooh. in Moonstone, which is kinda close. Love it. And I am taking a damp beauty blender and I'm just gonna apply this on the high points of your cheekbones, down the bridge of the nose, a little on the forehead and the chin and the upper lip. You know, I interviewed the um, creator of the Beauty Blender a while Oh, you back. did, Rianne Silva? Yeah, she's really cool. Cool lady. Brilliant idea. Amazing. All it takes, that's, I actually look to her as inspiration for my product because mm -hmm. she just came out with one item. Right. All I, all I have is one item. It Granted, changed the game. Changed the game. Yes. I have a funny Beauty Blender story. <laughs> the first time I saw it, I had the opportunity to work on Pat McGrath's team oh. in Paris. And everybody had these pink eggs at their station, and I didn't. I felt like I was left out. So I immediately went and bought one while I was in Paris. And I brought it back and didn't know I was supposed to wet it. <gasps> Oh my God, that's so cute. So I was doing makeup on people with a dry sponge oh. and I'm like, it doesn't look the same. Why isn't oh. it working? And then somebody reached over and was like, you have to wet it first. I was like, so oh. cute. Thank you. So foundation I'm using on you is my favorite for like a light everyday look. It's the Chanel Vita Lumiere Aqua. And this is amazing. It's water-based and you just squeeze out a little bit and it does the job. I love the way that the Chanel foundation smells. Me too. What is up with that? I, I don't like fragrance in products, but Chanel can put a fragrance in anything and I'll like yep. rock it. Mm -hmm. It just smells luxurious it really and rich does. It makes and expensive. Me, it makes me feel like a just totally luxurious human being. What's your favorite campaign that you've worked on? Oh, that was just recently. I would have to say it was for Vitamin A Swim. I love their. Their so great. Much. I got and the the photographer found me on Instagram. First time that's ever happened that I've gotten a job from social media. She had been following me. She saw work that I did with another model, and she reached out and booked me for this campaign. It was with six women, all from different backgrounds and areas, and they um, something special and unique about them, and they're all different shapes and sizes and ethnicities and ages, and it was just a really great shoot. I did makeup on six girls. Wow, that's and a lot. And it was, it, was, it was just a lot of fun. It was yeah. a really good shoot. I had a great assistant. So that was one of my favorites. I would also have to say, um, there's a brand called Facile Le Fay. She is a dress and clothing designer, and it was her first uh, shoot, and she booked me, and I was just really happy to be a part of it. Um, and then I have a contact who found me on Craigslist 10 years ago. Uh, she had started a clothing line and then she went on to develop a lash line. Wow. And um, she had me do her campaign for her first uh, shoot with her lashes. It's Mademoiselle Lash. Isn't it an amazing contacts you can make on Craigslist? Yes, and years ago, reputation. yeah, that was different. <laughs> I don't know, I've still made a few good ones. Really? Yeah. I haven't used it in a while, but I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's probably pretty hit or miss. Yes, but Some yeah. dark areas of Craigslist. It was good. Sure. It was definitely good. And then I would have to say also, I did a, a campaign shoot with Hot Topic, and it was for Disney. Oh, my God. And so I got to do kind of like that rockabilly makeup and hair, which was really cool. Oh, my God. I was a huge Hot Topic nut job in middle school. Oh, everybody was. Oh. Hot Topic was great. And then Calvin Klein, I got to assist um, Lindsay Alexander. 
And that was the first time I've done a campaign with a luxury brand. And it was way out like past Santa Barbara in like wine country. And it was on this uh, winery. It, it was to walk up and see the amount of production that was involved. It looked like I was walking onto a movie set and it was a campaign and I got to assist her and that was, that was really exceptional. Wow. That was really, really cool. Just to be on that scale and see what happens behind the scenes was really cool. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure. Oh, AJ Crimson. I've always loved him as a makeup artist and he has his own brand of cosmetics. I love his foundations for women of color, for women not of color. It's just phenomenal cream foundations. And he asked me to do a campaign for his nude lipstick. So it was like my first like big beauty campaign for women of color. Awesome. And I, I really enjoyed doing that. That's amazing. Throughout high school, a lot of my um, friends, w women of color, would complain, you know, there's not enough mm -hmm. foundations that work for them, et cetera. Do you think that that's changing a lot Absolutely. now? Absolutely. It's yeah. a complete change. You can find your shade anywhere now. That's incredible. Yeah, I mean, it's like not a, even an it issue. It wasn't even that long ago. That but I remember when I started really wearing makeup was probably about 93. Mm -hmm. And I just went to MAC and I was NW45, but I was flat. Mm -hmm. We didn't know about highlighting and contouring. So your right. face looked flawless, but it was mm -hmm. super flat. There wasn't any dimension or definition or contour or highlight or anything like that back then. There was, but... We weren't doing it on ourselves the way we are now. Wow. So I'm putting a little concealer on you. I'm going back to Old Faithful Tarte Shape Tape. Oh, Tarte. Mm -hmm. That's another product or brand that I love in general. Their mascara. They have this one mascara that's only available. It's for, you know what? They discontinued it. <laughs> uh, it are you buying items that are limited edition? No, I swear to God, I think I'm just really unlucky. Mm. It was, um, it had like B12 in it. Mm -hmm. It was uh, supposedly really healthy for your eyelashes. I believe all of that <laughs> because I want to. And yeah, it was in like a purple bottle. And oh, I remember that remember one. It, right? And it was like in like a in a t tube, right? Yeah. Like the, it was like snakeskin. Yeah. Yeah. I th they, they don't make that anymore? I don't think so. Oh, we got to find it for you. Yeah. So with highlight for me, I don't go heavy in. It's just about accentuating areas, just giving it a little bit of pop. Even with the shape tape, it's pretty dense. You don't need a lot of it for it to cover and for it to highlight and for it to conceal. Like right now, we're very popping right now. It's popping. And I can use this for contour as well, like a darker shade. But today I'm going to use my favorite, which is the Soleil Tan de Chanel. It's Pop Bronze thing. Universal, but it doesn't have, um, it's matte. It has a little, I don't even want to say shimmer. It has a little bit of something, but I um, I love it for contour. I definitely need contour. My face is round. So I'm going to show you how to make it look oval. Mm -hmm. So let's just go over like the highlights of your <sighs> career as a makeup artist in Los Angeles. Okay, I'm going to say the most recent one is I got my first billboard. Oh my gosh, I remember when that happened. I was stoked for you. I got my first billboard and that show on Freeform called Siren about the mermaids. Yes. I got to do the billboard for that and it was... It's a stunning billboard. Thank you very and much. And it was everywhere. Everywhere. I have friends in New York sending me pictures of it. And then that week I got another billboard. I just did hair with this recording artist named Elohim. Mm -hmm. And um, I just did her hair and like the shot is her head's down and her hair is in her face, but it was in Times Square. Oh my God. Like that same week. So those were two career highlights. Um, also, I would have to say um, I got to key a fashion show oh. for V Files. Nice. And that was really cool because it was five designers in New York at Spring Studios and I got a lot of press from it and my work was in W Magazine and I had a team of 25 artists and I got some amazing sponsors like Makeup Forever sponsored it, Sigma Brushes sponsored it and so did Embryo Lease. So that was really, really cool. Incredible, yeah. And then I'd have to say the other highlight, like I knew I made it as a makeup artist when I got on Pat McGrath's team. Absolutely. That was like kind of like an amazing moment in my career yeah, for sure. Yeah, deal breaker, wow, that's incredible. I would also like to say I got reached out to my agency had gotten a contact from NYX oh, and yeah. they asked me to come into the makeup show and be a guest speaker. Amazing. So I did like a seminar on red carpet makeup and then I did like a kit essentials and that was a lot of fun because I met this girl there who said she flew from Bayron to hear me speak, which I was shocked to hear. 
Um, but she was really, really sweet. She's a very huge makeup artist there. And Bayron, it's funny, it was on Scandal that week, too. They ran what? Bayron. Oh my but God. it's like in Saudi Arabia somewhere. Yeah. But yeah, that was pretty cool. That's incredible. So that was awesome. So when I do contour, I think of this acronym. I learned this in makeup school 20 years ago, and it stayed with me to this day. So funky chicken gets super freaking out, categorizes certain things about your face. So the F stands for face shape. Mm -hmm. So if I'm looking at your face and it's round, I'm gonna make it more oval. Mm -hmm. The next thing is cheekbones. So I wanna make sure I place a contour at a place that gives you a, a high cheekbone. The next is gravity. So that's usually above the brows. So I can lift the brow based on where I put the contour. Next is special features. So if there's anything that needs to be corrected. And then the last one is nose. So I'm gonna contour your nose. So special features, like if you have a blemish or under eyes or something that needs to be corrected. I do. So, funky chicken gets super freaky now. I love it. Okay. So Let's I'm gonna start with face now. and I'm gonna contour the face. So I'm gonna go into the temples first. So just around the forehead to give it more of an oval shape. There, and then we do cheeks. And starting from this little divot of your ear, open your mouth, that's where your jaw pops. So that's where your cheekbone is. So to give it more of a lift, I'm just gonna go right in here. Yeah, you can close your mouth. <laughs> you get a little bit there, okay. As a guide, you don't wanna go further than the outer corner of your eye and you don't wanna go lower than the nose. I see people drawing contour all the way down here. It's just gonna give you a more pronounced cheekbone but that's not necessary for every day. And then I'm gonna do your jawline from the corner of the ear and then under here, and then drag that down. Look at me straight ahead, and then we're gonna do the nose. So from the nose, I go from the brow or the eye socket under, and then take it down the side. I see people snatching their noses to infinity and beyond, and I'm like, totally unnecessary. All you wanna do is just create more praline nose, and praline just means straight and even. How's mine looking? Looking good. So that's what we look like before we're blended. It is unacceptable to walk out of the house without blending your contour. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Noted. Noted. So then I'm just gonna go in my beauty blender, the backside, and I'm just gonna blend that out. And this is how I contour for every day. This doesn't have to be, like if I was going out and I was gonna be photographed or something, I might go in a little bit more and do powders with it as well, but this is pretty standard. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit more for gravity and that's like right above the brow. So where your brow arch is, if you hit it right there, it gives you an instant brow lift. So what's uh, the most like rewarding part about being a makeup artist? Um, I would have to say it's the fact that what I do can make somebody feel more self-confident, can make somebody feel better about themselves, can make somebody feel pretty, make them want to get their picture taken. Um, just knowing that my hand and a brush and some product can change how a person feels. That by far is one of the best things about being a makeup artist. That's awesome. Well, you helped me with that today for sure. Awesome. So, like I said, I always do eyes first and then I go in and do skin, but I always do the bottom of the eye last also. So I'm gonna go in with that same uh, eye tint from Armani and we're just gonna uh, do that on the lower lash line. Topiness, look up. And these dry quick, mm -hmm. you gotta work fast. How you doing? Excellently. So. I powder you next, and then I'm gonna do your bottom lashes so that then there's powder on the face and it doesn't uh, make my mascara stick to your skin. Perfect. You know what we're missing? What? Champagne. I know, huh? That's my bad. <laughs> next time. Yeah. <laughs> I have to do some bubbles. So this is my favorite little secret weapon. It's not a secret, because it's available to all, it is the Laura Mercier Secret Under Eye Brightening Powder. <gasps> So I hit it on the tip of my beauty blender, look up for me, and I give me a tug and pull. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Helps to get rid of any fine lines, and then I tap that under the eye. And this is my absolute must-have for red carpet as well. Who are some of the people you've worked on with red carpet? 
Uh, for red carpet, um, I just did my first Oscars this year. My uh, client was nominated for best documentary, and her name was Shoshana Ungerleiter, awesome. which is awesome, which is really cool. They didn't win, they lost to Free Solo, but that was a really good documentary too, which I got to do the director, him and his wife's grooming for a show I work on called That Moment When. Oh my gosh. Free Solo, that's the one where they like climbed? Yes. Oh my God. That was cool. My dad saw it. I have too much anxiety to see it. Was, like it was, it was, it was intense to say the least. So, going with a little bit of mineralized skin finish from MAC, which I love because it looks like skin. How you feeling? I'm liking myself. You liking yourself? <laughs> you feeling yourself? Definitely. Feeling myself. Feeling myself. All right, so did that. And then let us go in with some blush. I'm gonna go to... Gosh, I forgot how good you are at this. I, oh. didn't, I didn't really, but like, it's just Thanks. always so... Thanks, babes. <gasps> so let's see. I love my NARS blush palette. This is my go-to. It's kind of like always in my kit. Is it the orgasm one? There's a whole bunch of them. I have Sex Appeal, Orgasm, Dolce Vita, Seduction, Exhibit A, Love Joy, Desire, Amour, and Taj Mahal. And these are kind of like all of my go-tos. Everybody was obsessed with that orgasm. Color. Yeah, they've changed it. They've made orgasm into everything, like yeah. liquid, cream, yeah. lips, nails, everything. Yeah. So let's do a little, or I like orgasm and sex appeal together. Okay, let's do it. I mix those two. I do mix a lot of blushes to make more of a custom color. So come this way for me. And for blush, there's a few different places you can place it. Because we want your face to look more oval, I'm gonna hit it here and do kind of an infinity symbol back and forth, just up by the temple and by the higher point of the cheekbone. Oh, that feels to nice. To give you a little lift. I know these Chanel brushes are phenomenal. I feel like so many makeup products are like, just so sex centered. Yeah. Like the two faced, like better, better than, than sex, sex mascara. mascara. Cause sex sells them for it. I wish really it really does. I wish it would just say long lashes. <laughs> yeah. What if it did? Here's it a new mascara. Sound... It's called thick lashes. <laughs> yeah. But better than sex mascara is pretty it's good. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I've used it. I actually really like um, Too Faced, their eyeshadows. I have yes. a palette. It's actually, their like chocolate palette. Uh huh. I have that one too. You do? It's like yeah. gold. Yep. Yeah. It smells unbelievable. Yeah. It's really really good. Okay. So then I have my extended play Giga Black Lash by Mac. I love this for the bottom lashes. Go ahead and look up for me. I'm gonna spray it with my alcohol. I'll let that sit out for a second. And then I wipe it off and then I put it back in the tube. Sanitary Mary. Very important. And then I'm gonna go back in with my mascara one. We're just gonna look, have you look down. I'm gonna coat those lashes one more time and blend their false lash in with your real lashes. Good? Perfect. All right, so now we're gonna go in with the infamous boy brow. What's that? It's Glossier, the best new brand to hit the market. <laughs> yes. So, little boy brow goes a long way. And I'm all about a nice natural brow, but I also like them filled in a bit too. But this boy brow is one of those products you could just use by itself. It's got a little tint to it. Brush up the brow. And if you press it into the skin just a little bit, it's gonna give you the color where you might need it without it looking like they are drawn on or painted on, which is no problem with that. But you know, there's a time and place for a painted face. <laughs> That's true. You like that? I love it. Yes. So, do you have advice for people who want to work in the makeup industry? Save six months of income before you start freelancing. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously, you have to save that money because it takes a while to get paid and test as often as possible. Reach out to artists that you want to work with. Keep an ongoing mood board of inspiration of shoots you want to do. Um, one of the things I started doing recently is I partnered with this photographer, cinematographer named Beck Graben, and we kind of started this uh, 
society, a collective of different artists that we like working with. So it's called Vanta Society. Mm -hmm. And so we're getting together different creatives that um, have our same aesthetic, people we work well with, and we're creating a lot of content that's like fashion films nice. and photo shoots. And so one thing I'm noticing is that um, Nick Knight once said, more brands, fashion brands, want to see their clothes move. So the medium is moving more from photography into video mm -hmm. and film. So we started creating these fashion films together. So that has been amazing because we get to create the content ourselves. We get to decide what we want to do. Mm -hmm. We get to come up with the mood board and then bring on a team of people to help facilitate it. And at the same time, we also bring on a photographer. He shoots the video and edits it. And then we have a photographer on site who's gonna take photos so that we can submit those for um, magazine submissions and do editorial content. So we just did an amazing story about three skaters females in Chinatown and it got published in Huff and they asked us for the video and the print images That's which incredible. is really cool. That's incredible. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to use Boldly Bare lip liner. One thing I always like to ask people to do is do you like your lips lined on the line a little bit more full or a little bit less? Hmm. I don't know if I have a preference. I'm like happy about the size of my yeah, lips. Yeah, your lips are great. I'd say on it. One thing that is a pet peeve for makeup artists is as soon as you start doing a person's lips, they want to tell you a big old long story every time. And it's usually a red lip. They'll be like, yeah, so let me tell you what happened on a day. I'm like, oh my God. can you not? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let me tell you the story. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like, here we go. <laughs> Happens every time. So I always say, and now we're going to take a moment of silence mm. for this red lip. And never fails. It's like three seconds. And you want to say something so bad right now, don't you? She totally wants to say something right now. I was just going to say, I really like this color. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Couldn't wait, though, huh? No, had to wait, yeah, had yeah. To be right always, now. always, yeah. always, always. It's like when you can't do something. So then what I try to do is I will just have a conversation with them and tell them a story so that they're not tempted to talk, so that I just continue talking so that I don't, like, mess up. And then I like having them give me a little grin like you're doing now because then I can get all smooth and crisp there we go so there's the lip liner boldly bare oh my god can i talk now <laughs> yes you can i know you're dying to um, these are great this is a color pop ultra satin lip i just ordered these and they're super inexpensive i ordered all the lip glosses and they accidentally sent me the lip satin instead which was a good mistake even though they shipped me the gloss later and it got lost in the mail, I still haven't gotten the gloss, but the Aquarius Satin has been like a staple in my kit now, like a go-to. It looks gorgeous. But it's a long wear lip color, it stays put, it's creamy, it doesn't get too tacky. And I'm using my Cosetti lip brush, which I love. His brushes are all synthetic. And you have I think you're looking pretty good, and I need to do the same, so I'm just gonna take a little and just powder my nose. Okay. I require so, a lot. I'm really high maintenance. Remember when I said we were talking about your, your cream had gotten discontinued and you're yes. super sad? This right here. This looks almost exactly like I know. it, except for it was in a little like container like that. This you can only get in Milan. Oh. It's a Medina Chic and Shine just stick. In Milan. Oh my gosh. So this is a Medina Chic and Shine stick, and this is my favorite cream highlighter because it looks like skin. It's the same highlighter that Sir John uses on Beyonce because we all learned about it from Mother. Oh my goodness. And her highlighter is this, but 20 times better. What? Yeah. So, tapping it on the high planes of the cheekbones, and you will see in an instant how it's not like a strobey highlight. It literally looks like it's in the skin. See that? And I'll do down just the bridge of the nose, not the tip, because you are not Rudolph the highlighted nose reindeer. I'm not? No. Because if you put highlight on the tip of your nose, all you're doing is making it look longer. Oh. Well, I don't want that. No. So just down the bridge, and then we do a little bit on the chin. And what does that do? Just gives the face that oval shape. And then go to the right. And then a little bit right above the cupid's bow. And then we can take some right here on the brow highlight. And then right above those two. So, 
lit from within. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And then we're going to take it one step further. I love this. My dear friend Paris has a brand called Velvet 59. And this is her 24 karat gold chocolate dream oil. Chocolate dream. I love dream. this. I just take, see it's got little gold Ooh. flecks in it. We are putting gold on my face uh -huh. right now. Smell this. Oh my God. Can I just drink it? I know, right? Oh my God. So I'd like to take just one drop of this and then with a little duo fiber brush. Take this and just kind of brush that over my highlight just to give it a little bit more of a gleam. There we go. Dewy, I fresh. love myself and I don't need anybody. Okay. I'm and then last step is the Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. This is the cat's meow. I'm ready. And give this a little shake. Make sure it's pointing at your client's face. Yeah, that's always good. And close your eyes and just one, two, three, four, five. Oh. Boom. Boom I'm, shakalaka. I'm a new person. You are a new person. You look stunning. Thank you. You look effortlessly fresh and glowing. God, thank you. You're welcome. Only took three hours. Just that was a while. <laughs> it takes a while we to make me it. look this We talked through it. Yeah. Absolutely. So there's your finished look. Thanks for watching, you guys. Uh, I hope you learned something about makeup. Go follow LaVon on... All forms of social media. It's the same everywhere you go. LaVon Beauty, L-A-V-O-N-N-E. On Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. I never use Snapchat anymore. On website, everything is LaVon Beauty. And I also have a blog. I need to get back onto it. I haven't updated in a year. No, two years. But it's thecheckupfromtheneckup.com. Check it out from the neck up. That's what we did to awesome. you today. The yes. check up from the neck up. That's exactly what Madeline we did. Madeline got the full check up from the neck up today. And it was such an amazing time being here with you today. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for I coming. I really appreciate it. It's great to be here at Ipsy. See you guys next time. Bye.